Welcome to another edition of Business Today, where we discuss in depth the business world and its dealings. As always, we've got a great program for you. Today, we are going to be focusing on the Ports Authority. Now, we're talking about one of the most integral part of the Sri Lankan economy. Being an island nation, being a nation that is trading with the globe, it is an integral part of our everyday in our lives, even though we don't sometimes pay that much attention to it. How the ports operate and what's coming in to the country and going out of the country is vital to maintain businesses and to run a country. To do this, uh, to, to actually talk about this particular issue and to talk about what's going on right now, we brought on the chairman of the Sri Lankan Port Authority and we'll learn a little bit about him before we have a chat. General Daya Ratnayaka, the chairman of Sri Lanka Ports Authority, is with us in the studio. Welcome to the show, General. Hi nice everyone. to have you on. Uh, now, General, of course, mm -hmm. uh, you took over the chairmanship of the Sri Lanka Ports Authority in December of 2019. And of course, uh, three months into your chairmanship, of course, COVID hit and everything became what it is right now, the new normal. Uh, chairman uh, and General, how did this COVID situation start for the Sri Lankan Ports Authority and what has your experience been so far? Uh, first of all, thank you very much for giving us this opportunity and uh, uh, initially uh, when this came up and when the, when the COVID news came up in China and um, we realized that this is going to probably come out, you know, we got to be ready and this is how the port works actually. Port uh, health is very important because um, <coughs> health, uh, there is a separate uh, element from this health ministry called Port, port Health Organization because health is taken as one of the priority things for uh, port operations right around the world. Therefore, when this news came up and of course Sri Lanka, uh, our His Excellency the President took the leadership and in the January itself uh, we organized this task force and so on. I myself was included in the task force so we were working together. So. We immediately <coughs> uh, analyze the situation, we develop a uh, plan for Port Authority, especially. And um, we have the doctors, we have the health department representative, we have our doctors, we have all our uh, elements and Port tests, basically all elements in a country like. So that was an advantage, so we got together and develop a concept. So we, <coughs> that concept we publicized, we started educating our people. So that is how initially we started. Uh, as a result of that, and we really uh, got the assistance from the health department and the government and all of the elements and uh, educated the people, structured the system, so we were running the system. As a result, uh, initial wave, of course, uh, <coughs> you must understand, at that time, the, uh, 
the problem was coming from outside to the country so we were the first to get and the airport was almost closed at that time in the initial stage itself so then um, port uh, authority or the one we can't go we work even to date we work 24/7 we never close it so um, so then uh, average about uh, to, to 15 to 20 ships you get at any given time in the port so if you have about 20 people in a ship you see 3 400 people at any given time these are all outsiders coming from uh, various parts of the world so <coughs> you got to have protection from them so we develop a system to deal with them then over and above that at the initial stage uh, even the passenger crafts are coming average about 15 to 20 passenger ships per month used to come onto the harbor so average 500 to 3000 4000 people on board likewise so we manage initial stage very well with this concept and uh, up to october we never had any issue in the port so when the second wave came of course uh, there's a different thing so we got to redesign the redevelop the re uh, uh, when the whole system and we introduce a new system as a result even to date we are uh, with covid we are working without any interruption in major interruption but of course we for uh the latter part of october and beginning of november we for about 3 weeks we had the issue uh, that became kind of a serious issue actually so but we think very short period of time we uh, did overcome that issue as well now we are normal okay yes. because uh when it, the second wave hit both sides were affected so yes, you, yes. within and without uh general law uh, talking about the first wave uh how did the uh, port authority operate how did the, sh- the seamen who are coming into the country uh, be treated uh, with the supplies and how did they did they come abroad uh, so so <coughs> uh, this um, initial stage of course we develop uh, the system be all basic uh, requirements uh, they went through uh, the protective gear and all that we use Uh, so <coughs> interacting also we had the system so when never they come out uh, going out and you know, all those basic uh, they were in that time of the government uh, the the guidelines were given we followed 100% those guidelines in the same manner so as a result uh, we did not have an issue um, but um, later on the second wave was was the serious issue uh, when the initial stage actually um, <coughs> so since everyone was very cautious and so uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, it became kind of an advantage for us yeah. now when it came to near normalcy and people sometimes take risks and also as you said very correctly initially from outside the threat from outside we protected ourselves very well but when it came from inside we couldn't do that so uh, because uh, even now we did not get anything from outside actually what port authority even now we get some people positive people but all from the society coming into the port that is how it is happening even now i must tell you we are managing it exceptionally well the health department came and inspected us they uh, regularly come and inspect and they their <coughs> recommendations their uh, appreciations are very high about the port and the our concept and the way we are managing it Yeah. It's a very small steps that we have to take just to be cautious so hopefully we do take those steps and make your jobs pretty easy as well. Yeah. Uh now talking about coming into <coughs> your position as the chairman uh, of the uh, Sri Lanka Ports Authority, uh what was the initial vision like? What were you really hoping to tackle if the situation was normal? Oh, wow. this time it was a change actually we came and I you know that my background is military background came into this and it was a challenge for me. but i really uh, it was a challenge i like to uh, we we are people who like to take challenge but this time it was different from other uh, times when we came in uh, we were given the appointment letters not only the appointment but there was something attached to it by his excellency president he gave us okay immediate action plan the intermediate plan and the long term plans what we got to achieve in that time frame within 5 years it was given and beyond so based on that only we had to work. the concept was there to work for us to uh, put into practice so <coughs> it is a new experience but i realized within you no know, short period of time i realized there are enough and talented people 
they have plans they have master plans they have blueprints everything is there so i got to implement that's how it does there are so many problems we had initially but when initial assessment i realized mm, uh, there were two golden eras in the history of port authority and one of the eras top eras was 2005 to 2015 so thereafter a very dark period actually 2000 i must tell you this is not something a political thing but facts through facts i am talking 2015 to 2020 is the darkest period of our history of our port authority ports uh, uh, history so <coughs> then as a result uh, we had a serious problem of capacity in all aspects of port mm-hmm. authority so we got to work fast to uh, bring in new businesses new uh, actually improve the capacity basically when a port is working uh, when you reach about 60% 70% capacity you got to improve new facilities to maintain you maintain uh, you don't work towards 100% capacity if when you reach about 60% 70% you increase otherwise you lose you lose your business that is how the port the whole the, the nature of the business so um, from 2015 to 2020 we have gone 100% and plus even now we are working 100% plus even so now there yeah, are yeah, demand is over than the, the supply so we don't have storages for most of in yeah, storage we manage we have taken another thing but other facilities which you can't uh, overnight like the terminal facilities the crane facilities the all that there is a limit so we have gone past the limit general what are the current ongoing projects uh, within the ports authority now actually the first priority is to increase the capacity increase the capacity of the terminal that's one physical development terminal capacity is number one priority we are working on two projects right now within next one year we will have additional two berths berths in sense two ships could be parked at any given time that's how it is so, so ect uh, operationalizing ect into the full full capacity uh, is one number one task of ours so <coughs> ect we operationalize uh, the whatever the eastern terminal is a terminal of 1300 uh, long terminal uh, so only about 400 meters com- completed that was also not operated for 5 years so we operationalize it in um, october so <coughs> now it is so we have to put new uh, equipment and all that we have to operationalize to take it to the full capacity of it that's priority number 1 then on the other side we are uh, there's another terminal called jaya container jct jct has uh, four uh, segments and the fifth one is being developed and within next one year we will have uh, we will complete that as well so there will be additional berth so this is how we are developing capacity by mid next year we will have another additional capacity uh, of a ship berth uh, in um, ECT so towards uh, 2000 beginning uh, end of 22 and beginning of 23 we will have com- we will have to we have to complete uh, the ECT at the same time WCT the western terminal also will be uh, com- we will commence uh, we will commence that as well so we think uh, 2023 there will be additional work there as well so thereby we will be able to manage the capacity by 2050 25 we will have uh, both terminals fully operational that means eastern terminal fully operational and also the western terminal fully operational that's how then jct5 also will be operational so thereby we will be able to manage the capacity or the demand uh, we have yeah and of course uh, increasing the capacity might lead to attracting more traffic through sri lanka yeah yeah very much very much actually it will be by 2025 uh, according to our estimated estimates we will now presently we have the capacity of uh, 7 million uh, con- handling of 7 million containers so 7 million 7.2 million we are handling right now so by to- 2024 we will uh, we have our plan is to get about 15 million containers to be handled by the port authority that's yes. our plan then we have another plan also finalized by 2030 35 we will reach up to 35 million 
container handling capacity. That's our objective as far as the physical infrastructure development. There are by other areas coming up. In order to support this, there are so many other connected operations, connected businesses. So that thereby, uh, by 2030-35, we got to be very happy so as Sri Lankans. We will have a huge port, this part, which is the number one port in this part of the world. So, so that is our plan. We are working towards it and definitely year uh, 2021 will be a year of uh, transformation for the Port Authority. We wish you luck in that endeavour. Uh, and of course, uh, talking about Sri Lanka ports, I want to ask about the stories that are in the news cycle. So we've heard a lot about the Eastern Jetty and the Western Jetty. What is the situation currently? Yeah, personally, uh, Eastern Jetty, um, you know the news that um, it was to, uh, people are saying that it was to be given to India, but it was an investment actually, basically, that was what well, Eastern Terminal, um, this uh, problem came, people know this, and this problem came when uh, we were building it, uh, Port Authority was building it, and uh, then 2015 we had completed uh, 400 meters. But 2017, 19, uh, the the, the uh, that government, uh, the Hapalan government, signed MOC with India and Japan, and this became the issue. And without actually giving WCT, which was to be given on PPP basis, uh, they gave the one that the Port Authority has been doing. So that was the issue. Mm, um, <coughs> now we have got. We know that we got this. We got it sorted out. Hundred percent, the port authority will be operated or the developed and operated by the ports authority. So initially, also we had the plan in before 2015. We had the plans and we were building it. Now we had to revamp the system, update the, uh, the according to the current uh, requirements and scenarios. We have now finalized it, and within next, uh, already within, we have already started the yeah. whole process, and the process will be procurement process and the construction and all that will be started within uh, immediate with immediate effect, and uh, say our plan is to finish uh, the first uh, uh, the next stage to be completed uh, mid 2023, and finally end 2023. And beginning of to, to, uh, rather 22, end 22, uh, the, uh, first, the second phase will be completed. Uh, end 23, this, uh, on the entire thing will be completed. So that's the outlook uh, right now, 2023. Yes. Yes. Hopefully, everything will be completed. Now, of course, uh, talking about the Sri Lanka Ports Authority, it's not just foreign governments that you have to deal with. You have many interdepartmental agencies in the local government that you have to, whether it be customs and of course the local government sectors, uh, even private businesses you have to deal with. What is the communication structure like right now in the Ports Authority? Uh, there is a super structure being developed. Over the years it has been developed and so we are still developing it. Actually, um, some of the areas we are still uh, very primitive and some areas being well developed. So we, we are working on that. So digitalization is one of the top priorities and thereby, as you said, there are stakeholders. There are 42 stakeholders in the port business, if you really take it. There are major ones and smaller ones. Major ones are the ones that like custom and uh, shipping agents and uh, freight forwarders and other agents like that. And there are the <coughs> elements. There are about 10, 15 major stakeholders. So we have to work together on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, then quarterly basis. We keep on meeting them, uh, discuss with them. We work together. So within the port, we have three major terminals. Uh, with the eastern terminal, it will be the fourth one. Like uh, one terminal is operated by us, the port authority. Then uh, there is uh, another terminal called SCGT terminal, operated by John Keels and their company. And the other, the biggest terminal is the uh, terminal called Southern Port, uh, um, this uh, CICT terminal, Colombo International Container Terminal, operated by a Chinese company with the Ports Authority. So these are the three companies. So we, on a daily basis, we uh, together as Ports Authority, the Colombo Port, we sit together and discuss things and plan and uh, implement. That's how it is um, happening. So we, uh, with all other stakeholders, also we have regular meetings. It's a system is functioning. 
So we need lot of improvement in this. There is a lot of room for improvement. Uh, we have to introduce best practices in the world because it's an international business. There are, this is a huge competitive business. The competition is also very huge. Mm, so therefore, in order to survive, in order to be on top, and um, we go to work hard. We go to work uh, together as a country, as uh, a port. So we got to introduce uh, new uh, systems, and the, yeah. uh, the world best practices have to be introduced. We are on that line now. Introducing this year, actually, with uh, uh, Corona came actually as a it was a blessing to the ports. So in terms of we, in, we took it as a blessing. We took it as a challenge. We took it as a ch an opportunity. We transformed a lot of things, like. The digitalization was very difficult to uh, yeah, change easy. the mindset of our people. So with this, uh, we manage it very well, and we have interviews um, on like even the basic payments were not uh, it's just physical payments, but we have put 100% now it is online. Okay. Then uh, getting all container release and the stuff release uh, with the, in two forms it happening. One is called uh, FCL full containers. And second thing they call loose uh, cargo. So both elements uh, we have now digitalized, they all happening online. That's so that's a huge improvement. Huge I think improvement. the front end, uh, the customer was in there yes, now. Yes. So I think uh, we have heard about a lot of endeavors that you're planning. I know I'm not alone in wishing you luck because this is one of the most integral parts of Sri Lankan economy. Hopefully, this will continue to grow and develop so that we can actually have more uh, input into the economy. Thank you, General, for joining us today. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Yes. Uh, that was General Daya Ratnaika, the chairman of Sri Lanka Boards Authority, with us today. And with that, we'll wind up today's edition of Business Today. Thank you for joining us. Do join us next.